Good afternoon, DC Bar Association. I am delighted to come here today and present this webinar slash workshop on salary negotiation. So I call it a workshop because it's not gonna be just me talking at you this whole time. We're actually gonna have some interactive activities that will bolster your ability to succeed in the salary negotiation arena, which is what we're here to talk about. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the DC Bar, as you know, has a core component of empowering lawyers to achieve excellence. So in service of that, they do bring in speakers and workshop facilitators to achieve excellence. And that's exactly what we're gonna work on today. A little bit about me, my name is Daya Naif. I am a professional coach. I've been a professional coach for about two and a half years. I'm a certified mediator. I've mediated for a little over eight years mainly in construction disputes, homeowners, condo association uh, type disputes. So that's my background. So I practiced law for 16 years in the field of construction law uh, in New Orleans, Louisiana before moving to DC Metro. So today in this program, we are gonna cover some topics and it looks like a long list, but it's gonna go very quickly. So information, worth, culture, power, networking and questioning. So here are some statistics. So we have a poll function. I'm not sure if it's working. Oh, good. Okay. So the poll question, as you've seen here, is are you looking for a job change? So we're using the poll function so that people are not outing and not being visible if they don't want to be visible. You may be here in the same um, Zoom room with a colleague and you don't want them to know that you are looking. So there are three choices, um, not looking for a job, I'm actively looking for a job, and I'm passively looking for a job. So it looks like from the poll results I'm seeing, mm -hmm. okay, so we have a mixed bag. So we do, we have about 30, 30, 30. So that's great. And um, of course, some people didn't answer, but that's all right. Okay, so next question, I know what salary I am worth making. So go ahead and plop that in. The choices are yes, no, or maybe. So I'll give a little minute or so for those to come in. A lot of no's. Yeah, that's not unusual. Um, yeah, looks like no and maybe is our front runner and that is totally usual. So there are a lot of rumors flying around right now, especially in this COVID re-entry phase about what are the salary projections going to look like. And to be honest, we don't know. It is too soon to tell. Uh, please do not buy into any rumor. It's always gonna go into what your what you are worth, what skills that you have, and what the employer is actually looking for, like what do they need. So don't worry about it right now, and we're going to talk a little bit more about need and how to establish your characteristics so that you can get the highest amount that you're worth. So these are just a few statistics from last year. So just I'm so glad that your labor statistics lumps in kind of this area here, the DC metro area, because it's very different from the states, the surrounding states as a whole. So just a quick glance of that. Everybody wants to look at a whole bunch of numbers and we will move on. So this is another thing. So coming from the coaching perspective, you're looking at not only what am I worth with statistics and values and the salary range that somebody posts on Indeed or Glassdoor or Law Crossing, you're actually looking at what is worth to you. So if you are holding on to something that happened in a past job, something happening in a current job, um, good or bad, uh, or positive or negative, how you want to look at it, this is a great time to go through some exercises with a trusted friend or a coach to come into this next phase of your career completely level, completely blank slate, possibility, opportunity, ready to go. Of course, you will be armed with your statistics and your research, um, but this is more on the spiritual and emotional level as we go into this salary negotiation process. So this is 
information. This is an information gathering um, exercise that we're talking about right now. So who has ever had somebody review their resume and say it needs more results? And what I'm talking about is just say I held this position. I was an associate attorney in the litigation section. Okay, great. So you were there for a length of time. Obviously, you were there long enough to keep your job. So what did you actually achieve? What were the results? Did you become a specialist in a certain area? Did you save the company money? Did you publish articles that then led to greater client development? Yes. So this is often the most difficult part for people. It's like they really know what they did, but they really didn't want to toot their own horn too much. And this is something that is going to be very valuable for you in your salary negotiation. Next up is the company culture. So, so are you a good fit? Firms and companies are looking for new job placements, new candidates that are going to invest in the company, stay in the company, and actually be a good cultural fit. So you having this information and this knowledge specifically on your way in to your interview, be it live or virtual, then it's something that is going to really set you apart as an informed candidate. So what you're going to want to do is interview other people that work there, you know, if you can, um, but definitely read the public services announcements, especially if you are someone who's very committed to public services. If you are, if you are not, that's not as important, but it's still part of something that you would need to know about the firm culture. So what would be expected of you and kind of how things go. So if you're more of a status type firm seeker, then that's going to show uh, as well on their activities or lack of activities, uh, their website and the alumni news. And what I'm talking about with alumni news, it's both from your college or law school alumni network connections, and then also people who have, let's say, graduated from the law firm and gone into either government to another firm, gone solo, or have gone in-house. So as much information as you can gather around the culture of the firm is going to see where you are a good fit and you will be easier to hire and easier to pay the amount that you want to be paid. So a lot of career coaches will tell you or of, are the of the opinion that the balance of power is always with the employer in the beginning and then as you go further through the process, it becomes more toward the perspective employee. I'm going to differ with them a little bit because it's based on need, brand, and whether or not you are a known quantity. So if they need you for some reason and they need you to fit this position that they have, or they're creating a position for you, then you will have power. You have power going into this relationship. So it would be a whole nother, a whole nother course on how to work on that balance of power. Uh, just with the limited time that we have today, just know that it's an it depends kind of question. Uh, at least in my perspective, it's an it depends and you don't feel like you're always going into the situation with their on the strong end and you are not. So let's go on from there. So this is also something that you're going to have to find out some information. So like what is the need? So certain scenarios, uh, a company or an agency or a firm will need a certain position and they will need it right away. For instance, if there's a compliance matter. So if they have something they've been found, especially in agencies, if they've been found out of compliance, they need to find somebody right away to put in that position for a certain term at least to cover the compliance issues and there's an urgent need. Um, also firms as they're restructuring, they could actually lose a whole practice section or, or a significant part, portion of a practice section. And then what are they going to do with the clients that didn't go with the front with the the faction of the company that left. So there could be a need. There's possibly also a specific niche that you fill, and we can get into that as well in some of our uniqueness perspectives. And that's something that, again, you're going to have to do some research to find out. 
So this is one of my favorite uh, things to talk about to candidates because you're you're qualified. You're qualified as attorneys or legal support professionals or legal technology professionals. You have your qualifications, your education, and your experience thus far. What they don't know about you is you. What makes you unique? Uh, especially things if you speak a second language, if you are an artist, if you were on a board, if you were on a, a, in a civic organization, something that makes you tick comes up with a unique proposition. Um, also in that is also if you are a specialist in something. So for instance, if they needed an environmental person, having worked in some sort of environmental agency, having a higher up position in, in, our, in an agency like that or a volunteer organization like that will set you apart. So it actually shows kind of your depth of uniqueness in this situation. So, and also it never hurts to have a little bit of, a little bit of character and let your character or your, your kitsch show a little bit um, so that they get to know the real you. Because even though you want this position, you don't want to be in the wrong position yourself. So let's make sure that these things fit and then ultimately you will be able to be in a stronger position in ne negotiating the salary. And then the next on this, is are you a known quantity? What is your what is your background? Like who knows you? What is your reputation? So anybody who knows me already in this group knows that I'm a huge fan of LinkedIn. So LinkedIn connects you to people and people will know you. People will know your reputation. People will know the people that you know and they will know their reputation and it gets closer to you being a known quantity as opposed to someone who's new on the scene and all we're going on is the resume and whatever pre-screening interviews that you've gone through. So this is the best time to really seriously get some champions in your court. Find out who works there. Um, again, you're gonna reconnect them with them during the interview, um, I'm sorry, the information ga gathering phase. And now is where you guys wanna deepen your relationship and actually have them be a champion for your cause. So they can tell HR to look for your resume. They can tell the hiring partner in that division that you're going to be working in that you were someone to seriously consider for the position. Um, so I had another poll come up about LinkedIn. And it's not the only social network and it's not the only way to network. People can still network with, again, with their alumni associations um, in the DC area, clubs of various Sports are very popular and useful um, sports organizations. So if you play in uh, an intramural soccer league, great, that is networking. Those people know you, they know your values, they know you're on time to every practice and you are a good sportsman no matter what. So don't discount any networks. Um, however, LinkedIn is an excellent tool, um, especially now when we're still doing social distancing and we can't he is as engaged in our civic activities. Um, so let me look, who's doing LinkedIn? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a fair smattering of it. It's, it's about the same correlation as whether people are looking for a job or not. Um, I encourage you to always be using LinkedIn, whether you're looking for a job or not, whether you're starting your own company, um, whether you're moving to a new area, um, I really encourage you. I almost said please do it, but I really encourage you to use LinkedIn. And no, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I just think it's a great tool uh, to, to, keep a, to keep a strong network, um, which, is, which is invaluable uh, at any stage in your career. So even if you're planning on retiring, I don't think anybody here is, maybe, I don't know. Um, so even if you're retiring, please stay engaged in a network so that you can be of service to others and also not become um, socially isolated. So awesome. Next slide. Okay, so this is actually as you're going into the interview. So you're going to want to get the temperature of the interviewer and help me in their actual temperature. But are they, are they impatient? Are they the kind of person who is checking a bunch of boxes? Um, are they gonna be a chatterbug? Do they like to talk about their family? Follow along, follow along and follow suit. So 
they may also be like bored. They may also be like, oh gosh, you're like the 30th person that's come in today. Likely not, but it could happen. Um, so definitely want to match them as much as possible, not mimic, very respectfully, match the tone of the interviewer. So if they need to relax a little bit, then you can relax a little bit. Try not to be up like this if they're back like this. So same thing with like, you know, hand gestures, if they're a talker with their hands, kind of like I am, you can, you can relax a little bit. I wouldn't be sparring with them, but definitely it's a more of a relaxed gesture for people who are familiar with each other. And so also mirror like the tone, the rate of speech. So if they're a fast talker, try to keep up. Um, also try to keep their keep the eye contact. If there's someone who likes to maybe not keep eye contact as much, then don't be right there keeping eye contact. Um, although generally speaking, I, I'm one who likes to keep eye contact. Um, awesome. So as we move on, we are going to play a little game. The no game. Okay, so this game is designed to combat our human natural instinct to not want to be rejected. Yes, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into breakout rooms with pairs. And I want one, pair, one person in the pair to ask to get hired for two minutes in every way that they know think they can, they can possibly think of. Just Yes, you, you, know how to, you know how to try to get to what, what you want. So try to get hired, and the person in your pair is going to say no for two minutes, and then you're going to switch. Okay, caveat. If this is completely triggering to you, and it may be, and it may be good, like going to the gym is not always fun, but it's good for you. Um, However, if this is completely triggering to you and you do not want to do it, great, you'll have five minutes to network with someone you are meeting on this meeting. And again, you know, I love strengthening one's network. So we're just gonna break out. It's just to work a muscle. If you do play the game, um, I'd like to talk about it more on the, when we return from the breakouts. Um, also, if this is triggering to you and you don't want to talk about it um, to me, I will be on the line for 15 minutes after the program is over and I will clear up anything with you that I may have shifted out or you feel disempowering by either this game or anything I have said in the presentation. I'm totally open to that. I don't want anybody leaving here uh, triggered or upset about playing the game. Okay, so that said, you can also choose to just stay here in the room with me. It's only going to be five minutes. Okay, so doing the breakout rooms. All right. Great, okay. See y'all again soon. Okay, it looks like everybody is popping back in. Uh, do we have everybody? Yes, okay. Great, all right, everybody take a deep breath. All right, so again, let's go back. I am worthy. You are worthy. We're going to acknowledge that as an exercise, learn from it, and let it go. So I'm going to take people off mute so that we can discuss. And this part will be taken out of the recording. So feel free to speak freely and confidentially. I will, I will edit this myself and take it out of the recording. So let's go ahead and have some have some sharing. Great, thank you. Thank you so much for being honest and open with your sharing and feedback. 
you're building a muscle around that. And believe me, role playing with you know, a trusted friend or a coach, working through these negotiation and interview processes is highly recommended. Highly recommended. So we're going to recap again really quickly. So we talked about information. So gathering as much information as possible beforehand. So you know exactly what you're going into, exactly what you are going to do for that company or that firm, and what results you will produce for them. So you also know about the culture. And then you will, and in doing this, you will be balancing the power walking into that room for your salary negotiation. Um, again, networking, please have some champions pulling for you from the inside. Um, maybe if they're not actually in the company, maybe they're also on um, a civic board or something with someone who's there, uh, someone that you know you'll either be interviewing with or you'll be a direct report or you'll be on the team with them. A lot of homework, but it's, it will definitely pay off. And then questioning. Questioning is um, also in during the interview process. Uh, as well as before, find out what they really want and really implement the feedback of the interviewer as you are going along. All right, so what's next? Uh, again, I am a professional coach and I would love to speak to you more on this. So I have about six slots open over the next week. Uh, we can talk about questions and answers from this. We can talk about your career, we can brainstorm. Um, you can look at my network and see if there's anybody interested in my network for LinkedIn. Um, you will be receiving a LinkedIn invitation. If you want to go ahead and jump to LinkedIn in with me right now, feel free. Um, Daya Nafe, there's only one. It's a very unusual name. And you can also go ahead and use this link uh, to go ahead and just book some time on my calendar. So you'll just be getting it's an automated process, and I would love to talk to you in the coming week while this is still fresh and, um, and you're ready to go. Uh, or save it uh, as well for those of you who are not yet job seeking, uh, but it's also good to start talking about this uh, even for your next position at the company that you're already at. So thank you again, and I look forward to speaking with you all very soon.